Hello everyone, in this lecture we will be learning about inductive, also known as supervised learning, and a little bit about hypothesis spaces. Supervised learning is a very popular type of learning in machine learning. And in this supervised learning setting, the algorithm or the learner is required to learn a function that maps the input to the output. So by looking at different examples of input and output. The standard formulation for the supervised learning task is called classification. And we'll look at a couple of examples end of this lecture to understand this better. The next kind of learning is in supervised learning here, you have a set of inputs, but there are no outputs that these inputs are mapped to. So just using the inputs, you are trying to find a pattern in the inputs. It's also known as clustering, where you group these points, these data instances into several groups so that you can in understand and interpret them better. Semi-supervised learning combines both labeled and unlabeled examples to generate an appropriate function or a classifier. Reinforcement learning is also another type of machine learning in which the algorithm learns a policy of how to act uh, given an observation. So this is more for navigation, for uh, game playing, um, when in real time a bunch of actions have been made in the past and few more the algorithm has to learn to make in the future and it works in the real world to do that. Every action has some impact and after the agent makes the action it is has a feedback mechanism that it uses to understand its mistakes and improve in its future actions. So different situations require different types of machine learning algorithms and not every type of algorithm is applicable for every type of situation. So let's look at some of the some popular situations where machine learning is used and determine which type of learning is best. The first one is determining the best move to make in a game. So in a game, you don't know what moves are going to come but you have made some moves in the past which you cannot change so for such real-time navigation and game playing reinforcement learning generally works the best because there are many different ways a game can be played and you do not know how your opponent plays their skill level and you want your agent or the algorithm to adapt according to how according to the responses that the algorithm is getting and to learn from past mistakes and not commit them again. Distinguish between dogs, cats and horse pictures and this is a very standard classification task right so you want to uh, you have a bunch of examples and you want to group them into dogs, cats and horse, horses. So if you have a bunch of examples which are labeled which have the right label so suppose you have a dog photo and you have labeled that as a dog photo and that's a labeled example and if you have a bunch of labeled examples then supervised learning uh, can easily uh, work on this data to distinguish between um, dogs cats and horses but if you have a bunch of these photos and you don't have not labeled them which is a dog photo and which is um, a cat and you want to still use an algorithm then unsupervised learning algorithm would be the best. Elevator scheduling. How do you schedule an elevator to go to different floors? But this is again a real-time task where some requests come in. So you don't, you cannot predict the requests in advance. Um, when the request comes in, you are going to see how the elevator is satisfying the request. And if it fails to satisfy some requests, you want to make the elevator improve from its past mistakes. So I would say reinforcement learning is the best option for the third one. Fourth, agent and field trying to diffuse a bomb. Again, this is similar to navigation, game playing, uh, an agent working in the field. Suppose um, the agent finds a package, but it's not a bomb, then has to go and 
keep looking, but if it has formed, found the bomb, it has to defuse it. So these actions depend on where the agent is going and its past actions. Again, reinforcement learning. Speech analysis of telephone conversation, 400 hours annotation time for each hour of speech. This is an interesting example because it does not fit completely into supervised learning or unsupervised learning because oftentimes in natural language tasks, there's a lot of data, but labeling the data is very hard. So coming up with an algorithm which can get the best of both worlds, which can get better performance uh, using the labeled examples, but also can use the unlabeled examples effectively would be required. And here, this would be a case for semi-supervised learning. In a nutshell, there are tens and thousands of machine learning algorithms. Several new are proposed every year. But all these algorithms have something in common, representation, evaluation, optimization. So, and this is what we will learn in this course. Whatever we learn can be grouped into one of these three higher level buckets. Representation, how do you represent the data? How does your function that you want to learn look like? What hypothesis space that it belongs to. We are going to look at hypothesis spaces next and I'm just giving you where it fits. Decision trees, sets of rules, graphical models, neural networks, support vector machines, ensemble learning, all these are different representations for your algorithm, for your machine learning model that you are going to use to perform the task. And we'll look at different, all these models actually, and more of these in over the course of this semester. Evaluation. You need a way for the algorithm to determine whether it is on the right path, whether it has done a good job or what is the performance of this model and how it can improve. For that, we have different performance measures. Some performance measures are relevant for classification. Some are relevant for clustering or unsupervised um, learning problems. Some are more relevant for a reinforcement learning algorithm where it has to learn from its mistakes of the past uh, and so on. So these are sort of a list of the different evaluation measures that we will look at and a subset of them. We'll look at a subset of them and um, we will you will use them in your programming assignments when you want to measure the performance of the algorithm that you write and uh, test it on some data. The third bucket is optimization, combinatorial optimization, convex optimization, constrained optimization. So how do we solve an optimization problem? How do we optimize the algorithm for the data in question? So that for that, there are, there, there are a bunch of optimization techniques that we will look at. Uh, we'll look at some of this in more depth um, in tandem with an algorithm or a machine learning model uh, that we discussed in representation. We'll look at this side by side. All right, so to introduce super supervised learning, we have a bunch of training examples. And the word supervised comes from the fact that you have labels. So let's say we can give them by x, f of x. f of x is a function over x, and we often uh, say f of x is y, y refers to the target that you want to predict. And here I'm using f of x because to introduce the concept of a function that maps your x, x as the input, to y. So think of f as a function which transforms x and gives you y. And we assume that there is an underlying true f from which your y's actually come from. So you have a bunch of data points x and you feed them to this function f which is a true function and then that gives you the output y but we don't know the true function and our job when we are trying to build a model machine learning model is to find an approximation to this true f for example uh, let's say uh, you want to do a credit risk assessment 
x would be properties of customer and proposed purchase right you have all the different attributes belonging to the cu customer um age uh their past purchases uh their credit score or uh, their other um loan payments all those things are the properties in x and f of x is what you want to predict right to approve or reject this current purchase this is diagnosis properties of the patient symptoms lab test results and those are all your x the input to and then f of x would give you the diagnosis whether or not this particular patient has this disease uh, what do you recommend for therapy face recognition x bitmap bitmap picture of the person's face all the pixels can go as x and f of x could be a uh, person's name in our previous example we saw a dog a horse or a cat and that it could be what kind of animal it could be a woman or a man it could be a kind of hairstyle different things that you can possibly predict appropriate applications for supervised learning situations where there is no human expert for example bond graph for a new molecule there are many many um, tasks for which humans experts are hard to find for example um, some chemistry problem some uh, very dna patterns are very hard to detect for humans they may make errors or such a expert is very costly and also may not be readily available then supervised learning could be pretty handy because if you have a bunch of examples labeled with that molecule then an algorithm could train and learn to predict situations where humans can perform the task but cannot describe how to do it i think this is much of the supervised learning application falls in the second bullet i would say where humans are really good at the task but cannot really describe it for example how do you identify an apple um you you know the shape and uh you've seen it and you have registered it in your mind so for a fun fact um humans can learn to to identify objects at a, such an early age by looking at very few examples and even after looking at tens and thousands of examples a deep learning image classification algorithm cannot successfully sometimes detect um detect simple objects if there is snow in the background if the background is uh, of the same similar color for example a red background an apple in the front um like a red apple in the front a green uh, um, a machine learning algorithm cannot uh, successfully detect it there are many such scenarios where um, humans can perform the tasks pretty easily but cannot really describe how to do it situations where f of x is changing rapidly and this is stock prices new stories um, current events disease prediction all those things um, the information is coming along and you it's changing pretty rapidly so you want an algorithm that adapts pretty quickly to new information and uh, before humans can do it the algorithm should be able to use that information to predict to give you predictions situations where easy each user needs a customized function and that's again uh, where machine learning algorithms would shine because one um, it has all these unique attributes that it needs to look at and reply for example now your google um, reply auto reply suggests some replies uh, to emails that's based on the email text in the email that was sent to you so they look at for tons of emails and then they learn to give replies but but these this data really helps the algorithm to give automated replies